What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host with the most, Avery here. Wanted to bring you guys another degenerate deck profile. <laughs> and uh, as you can tell by this deck, it is extremely degenerate. <laughs> and this isn't even the main build that I want to show you. Um, there's actually another build that I want to show you, but I wanted to start off by showing you all this build. Um, but if you guys could do me a huge favor and support this video, um, my Royal Magical Library 60 card FTK deck got almost a thousand views it's sitting at 772 when i checked this morning so if you guys could be sure to really support this video i would greatly appreciate it i've been seeing this deck all over youtube and i really want to bring it to you guys in an in-depth deck profile so without any further ado let us get into the bamboo skip lock deck now this build revolves around final countdown and basically you use a cursed bamboo sword and terminal world to skip your opponent's turns and then you use final countdown to win this build is not that good because you can run out of cards in your deck with pot of desires if necroface doesn't go off you're kind of screwed so the build that i found to be the best is a statue sun build uh pretty much it's the same engine um but i'm going to go ahead and go into the deck profile first and then we will talk about it so without any further ado let's just dive right in <laughs> so we got three fossil dina three barrier statue of the inferno three fire statue same thing Three Royal Magical Library. Royal Magical Library is a staple in all these bamboo sword builds. So, you know, you could play a Venom and Naga build, which I've seen before, where you play some reptiles with a Zodiac engine. You still play Royal Magical Library. You make your opponent skip their turns, uh, attack them three times with Venom and Naga, and you win. Uh, one, Raigeki. Three, Pot of Desires. Three, Foolish Burial uh, Goods, which is very good in this deck. One, Dark Hole. Three, Carter Demise. One, Upstart Goblin. Three, Golden Bamboo. Three, Into the Void. Three, Pot of Duality. Three, Terminal World. Three cursed bamboo sword, one broken bamboo sword because it's just so broken. Like gaining zero attacks is too broken, <laughs> and three cursed bamboo sword. So I think I, I think as they say, cursed with this one, burning bamboo sword and cursed bamboo sword. So obviously we're not playing any traps like a normal statue stun deck. Normally the statue stun deck revolves around playing uh, many many traps, usually around like twenty traps or so. Well, you're probably wondering how does this lock work? Well, simple. Um. With the effect of Burning Bamboo Sword, its effect is that if you activate a Bamboo Sword card while this card is face up on the field, you can skip your opponent's next main phase one. And it's actually not an equip spell like the other Bamboo Sword cards, it's actually a continuous spell. So, the normal play is that, uh, usually with the best hand scenario that you want to have, is normal summon out Roll Magic Library, going first of course, because you don't want your opponent to step aboard. <laughs> um, you activate Broken Bamboo Sword on the library, giving it a counter. Or, excuse me, you activate... Um, Burning Bamboo Sword first, giving Library counter. Then you activate Broken Bamboo Sword, giving Roll Magic Library two counters. By activating Broken Bamboo Sword, you've now triggered Burning Bamboo Sword. So now you can skip your opponent's main phase one. Then you want to activate Cursed Bamboo Sword, giving Library three counters. Then you're going to remove all three counters to draw a card. And Cursed Bamboo Sword is very good in this deck for this reason. The Equitable Monster begins zero attack. It's too broken. <laughs> no. Uh, what it is, is that you can target a Bamboo Sword card you control. So you can target itself. You can target Burning Bamboo Sword, Broken Bamboo Sword, whichever. You target it, uh, or I'm sorry, except itself. You return it to the hand, and if you do, the Equipped Monster can attack your opponent directly this turn. But you can only use the effect of Cursed Bamboo Sword once per turn. If it's sent to the grave, then you can add a Bamboo Sword card from your deck to your hand except Cursed Bamboo Sword. So this is why Foolish Burial with Goods is, is very good no pun intended, because you can activate Foolish Burial Goods, dump Cursed Bamboo Sword, and then use the effect to get a Golden Bamboo straight to your hand, a Burning Bamboo, or a Broken Bamboo Sword to your hand. Now, the other part of this combo um, is not only are you making your opponent skip their main phase one, you're making them skip their whole turn essentially with Terminal World. Now, Terminal World is a continuous spell where you can only activate it during your main phase one, but while it's on the field, both players skip their main phase two. Now, as you can see, we're already making the opponents skip their main phase one. So, in theory, if we've gone first and we've set up this board accordingly, we have a Royal Magic Library on the field with a Terminal World, a Cursed Bamboo Sword, a Broken Bamboo Sword, and a Cursed Bamboo Sword on the field. We've already activated both, so the opponent's going to lose their main phase one. We're going to use Cursed Bamboo Sword to bounce back Broken Bamboo Sword into our hand, so that it doesn't get Twin Twistered or anything, and then we can just use it next turn to constantly recycle with Burning Bamboo Sword to constantly make the opponent skip their main phase one. So when it goes to their turn, if we have this combo set up correctly, then they're going to go into their draw phase. It's going to go to their standby phase. If they don't have a Twin Twisters in their hand, then their standby phase will end. They'll go into main phase one. They won't be able to do anything because it's skipped. They'll go straight into their battle phase. Now, because they're going first, they're not going to have any monsters on the board. So they can't use their battle phase. So then they go to main phase two. 
Well, main phase two is skipped because of terminal world, so then they have to skip that and go straight to their end phase, and boom, it's your turn again. The opponent didn't even get to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Literally, all they got to do is draw one card. So the only way that they can play out of this is if they draw for turn, or if they open with a Twin Twisters. Now, the final countdown build I showed at the beginning of this video, you saw Master Key Beetle. And it's good in that deck because you are running the Dark Barrier Statue. So you can just overlay two of the Dark Barrier Statue into the extra monster zone with Key Beetle. And then you detach to target the Cursed Bamboo Sword. And the next turn you detach to target the Terminal World. So that Key Beetle is not, has now locked up Terminal World and Cursed Bamboo Sword. Preventing Twin Twisters from popping those cards. And then in this build, like I said, I think that this is the better build. Because even if this lock fails, you still have a little mini Statue Stun Engine-esque to stop the opponent from special summoning and making plays. The rest of the deck is just a draw engine because you want to get to this um, setup as quickly as you can. Um, I I, if you guys have seen my other deck profiles, you know I really just don't like desires. I feel like you lose too many resources. And, you know, like I showed you in the countdown build, you're relying on countdown to win um, unless you use Necroface to win. So that's why I do like this build better because even if you use desires to kind of go through your deck, because you're already going through your deck a bunch with all your other draw cards and potted dualities and whatnot. You can just keep on constantly poking your opponent every turn with a fossil dyna and a barrier statue. Um, so, and even if they somehow get a monster on the board, you can just activate Cursed Bamboo on a barrier statue or a fossil dyna, activate Broken Bamboo, they skip their main phase one, bounce the Broken Bamboo, and then they can attack directly over a monster. So, let me know what you guys think about this video. Um, if you guys have any questions about this deck, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure that there are ways that this can maybe be improved, maybe swap out the fire statues for maybe the dark statues, since there really is no dark decks that are top tier right now. And then you could overlay both into Key Beetle and the extra monster zone, as long as you don't have a fossil dine on the board. And then you could do the whole Key Beetle lock on uh, Burning Bamboo Sword and Terminal World. But this deck is so much fun to play. It is so much fun to troll with it. Um, I still definitely like Trickstar OTK more, just because it's, it's more fun. <laughs> but, you know, Ghost Ash can't stop none of this. Ghost Ogre can't stop none of this. It's so degenerate, so fun. Oh my gosh, you just, you whip it out and you play with yourself. Like, that's really all you do. <laughs> so, anyway, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button. No notification bay of the day, because I didn't get any comments, but it will be in the next video. As long as there's some comments and some likes and some favorites, and people are hitting that ding-dong notification bell, so that you can be notified when your boy is uploading them videos. Because I know you want that, that good stuff. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for watching, as always, and subscribe, if you've not already.